It is a scam when you don't allow everyone to operate on fair terms. We are the Robin Hoods of sports betting. We take something back from the rich bookies and enable our customers to beat them instead. G'day everyone, welcome to episode 35 of the Trade Mate Sports Betting Podcast. Got another preview here of Game Week 38, the penultimate game week of the EPL and bloody hell it is an exciting one as always, or for the second time maybe. Joined by both George Gamble and Haru. We'll say good day to George first, how are you mate? I'm doing well, first thing in the morning here in the UK and it's, uh, yeah, it's a good one so looking forward to this one. Yeah, it's always exciting when it's, uh, you know, on the weekend of the final day it's always it's always a, a good weekend of football so i'm looking forward to previewing this one yeah i'm looking forward to it Haru, mate you still awake yeah i'm on the other side of the world but um i'll be going to sleep after this so it's the <laughs> opposite time of day for me <laughs> yeah i'll tell you what we're uh, we're working hard to get some uh, content out there for you guys so you better be appreciative um but anyway we'll move on football quiz question of the week to get us kick started uh, Haru, I don't know how good you'll be at this one, but it's the, what's been the top four for the two previous seasons? And if uh, just to make it a bit more challenging, we'll try and put them in order too. So for the 17-18 season, what was the top four there? And the 18-19 season, what was the top four there? And as I said, an order would be nice, fellas. An order would be nice. I did get this one myself, I will say. Uh, just, uh, just to share. Well, that I know, side. I know, Leicester had a bit of a run, so I'm just gonna guess that the 2017 year was the year that they came out on top. But I could be wrong; it might be the year before. Who are you uh-huh. guessing? Sorry, Leicester. Leicester. Oh, jeez. Yeah, man. that's not a good no. start, is it, George? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't. I didn't want to say anything. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that one. <laughs> yeah. So, what was it? Where was it the year before or the? 2015, yeah, okay. that's the one that's yeah. So, yeah. yeah Time's flying. Yeah, Time's flying. Time is flying. <laughs> All right, so let's just guess. I mean, I'm, uh, I know Tottenham made Champions League last year, and I follow them a lot, so I'm going to throw them in the, in, in the mix for last year. They were in the top four, maybe finished fourth. Um, I don't know if you know the uh, format of the podcast, mate. Will we reveal the answer at the end? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. It really so is I just, late, isn't I, it? I just gotta I just gotta keep mental note of it and then we answer at the end. That's right. Yeah. You just focus on the markets for now, mate. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, just a just a general question to kick things off, fellas. Uh since it is the last game week, is it for you, Haru, is it any different to how you would approach a normal game week, considering there are games like just off the top, like Burnley versus Brighton, where there's basically nothing to play for. No, nah, I mean I'm not. I'm not really interested to get in positions, especially like when um, season's reaching its end. Um, there's just so many spots where like I can get so much money down on very valuable information that usually gets factored in late um, on lineups and things like that. Certain players are being ruled out, or like the entire top stars of a team are gone. Like you could just find so much value there. For me, it's not really beneficial or rewarding to speculate on positions this early, especially if there's no real movement to follow in the market. Yeah, and you, George? Um, I'd kind of approach it as you sort of said. You know, motivation is key, really, in terms of these kind of games. And whilst there are teams with still a lot to play for, um, you know, there's quite a lot of teams that haven't really got anything to play for and the, the season's kind of over it's just sort of you know um, completing the season um, so for games for example like Burnley Brighton I'd be looking probably more at, you know considering they're two teams that don't get many cards anyway from a cards perspective this is obviously I'd be looking at to see what the line is and potentially go on the unders because um, I just I think it's a case of just getting to the end you know like, like I said the season's done really for both teams um, and so there's not going to be too much frosty there's no going to be no kind of end to end stuff someone pushing to get a result there's going to be none of that so there might not even be any intensity um, obviously you no, know, every game's different so you could be wrong they might decide they want to end on a high but because you don't know that it's, it's you're better off kind of leaving it really but it depends what the line is if the line's still set relatively high so for example if Burnley Brighton was at 3.5 cards then I'd be looking to play the unders on that one um, yeah. it'd be kind of the same for, for most of the other games where both teams haven't really got anything to play for Alright, cool. So the way we'll structure it today is we'll go through 
the six games where there is something to play for um, yeah. on Sunday. So we've got Leicester United, Chelsea Wolves, Palace Spurs, Arsenal Watford, West Ham Villa, and Everton Bournemouth. Um, and, yeah, we'll just skip out the other four games just because, yeah, there isn't much to play for and it can be quite unpredictable. But as George said, maybe be looking out in the cards markets and, uh, yeah, have a look at his card spreadsheets when he puts it out on Twitter and see if there might be a play there um, on the overs or the unders, sorry, as uh, George said. But, fellas, we'll start with Leicester United. Both teams here playing for a Champions League spot. I'll run through the odds quickly. So you got 3.4 for Leicester, 3.64 the draw, and 2.34 for Manchester United to win. They're the best odds I could find on each of those markets. Um, George, mate, anything interesting here stats-wise or cards-wise? Um, well, the only thing I've noticed is since you know return of football um, in lockdown, particularly Manchester United games, the unders on the card lines is usually always hit. Um, I think apart from their last game, you know, when they picked up three home cards, which is the first time um, they've picked any, any amount of cards in terms of that number um, since lockdown started, it's usually been one maximum. Um, and given Leicester, you know, they're the, the second best disciplined side in the league, um, only beaten by Liverpool in that one. Um, but given what's at stake, I'd be potentially tempted by a, a most cards market. I think. Um, thing is both teams I think with a draw obviously a draw would suit them so it, again it's, mm. it's hard to tell because there's so many different factors that come into play with cards and given the unpredictability I quite like a most cards bet um, potentially with with United um, for this one just because of Leicester's you know home record in terms of cards um, obviously Manchester United being away but then like I said you've got a factor in the fact that a draw suits both teams really so well, it definitely suits United, doesn't it? Because if they get the draw, then they're definitely in. Whereas yeah. if City get the draw and Chelsea win, then it doesn't really suit them at all. So, um, yeah, I had a looking at this personally. I thought maybe, I mean, Leicester are not not very in form at the moment. United mm. have been a bit slow the last week. I would say. Yeah, I would say mostly down to Solskjaer just playing the same lineup every time. His players are exhausted. I would assume, like players like Fernandez and Rashford and all them. Um, yeah, yeah. agree on that. I mean, I put if it was me personally, I don't think I'd be. Although it's a game of interest in terms of there's both teams have something to play for, and um, there's nothing kind of assuredly. There's too many different factors in play for me to be like, right, this is a bet that I'm quite sure of, and this is what I'd go on. There's too many different factors for me. It's going to be an interesting one to watch, but. Um, again, you know, Leicester, they usually don't pick up hardly, well, they pick up hardly any cards at home usually. But with Manchester United coming in, with it being the final game of the season, with there still a lot riding on it, that could change. But so it could go completely against the stats. So I think this one would be a, a viewing one for me. There might have been in play selection, possibly. Um, but yeah, I'd kind of want to see how things are panning out elsewhere for them, really. Yeah, well, it's definitely. Probably the game of the round. It's very, very exciting that you've got down mm. to the end of the, you know, EP EPL season. Oh, definitely, definitely. You've gotten a situation where you've got two teams, winner takes all kind of situation. Um, Haru, mate, markets wise, what are you seeing? Um, just a tiny bit of some support on uh, Leicester. Um, on Leicester um, when it first opened up at the exchanges, but. Because both teams have something to play for, I feel like there's going to be a lot less volatility in the line because the teams are going to come out with um, their strongest uh, their strongest rosters to, to probably play this game. So it's not really not going to really see volatility in the line. And I think that the pricing that's both set on the total and also the goal lines for both teams is pretty efficient. There hasn't been any like hard hitting since the release of the line. I know Pinnacle came out a few few hours ago, maybe like 12, 12 to 24 hours ago on all these EPL matches. And we on this match particularly, we haven't any seen any type of sharp movement so far. So as of, the, as of how it stands right now, there's nothing really I'm looking at to play on this match. So you're saying there's more likely to be volatility come maybe a couple of hours before kickoff or when the lineups come out, uh, like in a game maybe like Palace Spurs or Arsenal Watford, where only like one team has something to play for. Yeah, exactly. Even like even like a even like a Norwich Manchester, like you really don't know like what you're gonna get. Like not all the variables are exposed. Whereas opposed to a game like 
you know, this Manchester United matchup against Leicester, you're not going to really get too much volatility because a lot of a lot more variables are already plugged into play. Yeah. Yeah, that makes complete sense, mate. Do you have any idea where you think the money will go? I mean, to be honest with you, because both teams are going to play, we have a low projected total. I mean, that's usually correlated with the with the double chance. So, I mean, it's hard to say that any money, especially the way that Man United has been playing, that they'd get any support here after their performance against West Ham. Okay. All right. Very interesting stuff, fellas. Um, another big game, Chelsea versus Wolves. Chelsea playing for a Champions League spot, Wolves for a Europa spot. Um, and the fact that... So, you've got Wolves and Tottenham, who if they win, they'll qualify for Europa. Um, but whoever finishes in seventh out of those two teams... Um, might not qualify if Arsenal win the FA Cup. So there's still a lot to play for those two teams. They'll both, um, I mean, they'll both, they both really need a win to actually certify their spot. Um, odds at the moment, best odds are 1.91 for Chelsea, 3.9 draw, 4.55 for a Wolves victory. Georgie, what do you reckon, mate? Um, I think those kind of, those odds, they do reflect um, kind of the statistics, really. So, I mean, I was doing obviously a bit of research before. I mean, you know, Chelsea have scored in in seven out of eight games um, at home to sides, obviously in the top half this season. Um, and interestingly as well, Chelsea are unbeaten uh, in all five home Premier League games they've had against Wolves. Mm. Um, interesting fact as well is Wolves could become only the fourth EPL side ever to have uh, no English goal scorers throughout the entire season, <laughs> which is uh, quite an interesting one. Obviously, except own goals, which obviously you can't count. The other one's obviously been, I think it was Arsenal, Stoke and Fulham. Um, but yeah, with this one, I can only see, I see, I see Chelsea coming out winners in this one. I think the you know, Wolves have been fantastic, but given how Chelsea are kind of playing, obviously we saw uh, midweek in their game against Liverpool, you know, they've still got goals in them, quite a lot of goals, obviously Giroud being very hot in form. Um, I think they'll come away with winners in this one against Wolves, but like you said, obviously, if, cause if Chelsea beat Arsenal in the FA Cup, Obviously, um, that Europa spot's up for grabs, but I, I don't. I see Wolves leave himself a bit exposed potentially at the back, um, just simply for for the pace on that Chelsea side. I see Chelsea coming out. So, like I said, it, it reflects in the odds. I think Chelsea are winning this one. In terms of cards, again, it, it's very very unpredictable with this one. That sometimes you know these teams are very they're not consistent in either not picking up any cards or you know they'll have one game they might pick up one or none. Next game they pick up four or five. It's very unpredictable. Mm. Um, so for this one, I think with Wolves, I'd be tempted to play an under again if, if I'm perfectly honest with, with these two, um, or Wolves to get two or more cards because when Wolves are playing away from home against sides, obviously you know in the top half or, or top six, it's so over fifty percent of their games that they pick them up in. So it'd be a, a more statistical play on that one, and uh, I th- obviously I think they'll be facing wave after wave of Chelsea attack. So mm. the players in the middle, such as you know if Dendonka starts or, or Neves there, or Moutinho even, they can often get. Niggly fouls, and I think they'll be committing a lot of them against Chelsea, just given the way that I expect the game to go. So I think if that was my play, it'd be uh, probably on Wolves cards um, and even a Chelsea win. Okay, very interesting stuff there, mate. Um, it's another game here, Haru, where both teams are most likely going to put out their best lineup, so less volatility, as you said. Happy to make a play here early? Um, possibly, yeah. If I had to pick between this and the Man United game, I'd definitely lean more towards this one. I'm seeing a lot more activity here. The game has been probably released at Pinnacle maybe about 20 hours ago. And we're seeing some movement already um, favoring Chelsea a bit. Um, and open at like 1.92. Uh, but we've seen areas in the uh, line history that show us that it could peak at 1.8. It's come back down a little bit, but when you're seeing the offsets in the in the line history, you're seeing that there's a little bit more of a push on Chelsea than there is towards Wolverhampton. So I feel like that money can offset the any support that Wolverhampton would get. But like I said, it's always gonna that that last bit of information that comes in right before match can always alter the true probabilities of a match. But on early support seeing it go towards Chelsea so I kind of agree with with what George was saying on his uh, read on the Chelsea side yeah it's a very interesting battle isn't it because you've got Chelsea who 
have been, I mean, they're a very good attacking side, as you can see, as probably seen some of the highlights from Pulisic in the last game against Liverpool. They scored three goals against Liverpool. Um, Wolves are a very good defensive side. So um, it will be interesting to see kind of how that battle plays out. Um, fellas, we'll move on. Palace versus Spurs. Spurs playing for Europa spot, as I said earlier. Um, Palace on a six-game losing streak. Um, and I don't think that's really been reflected in the odds here, personally. You've got 6.75 for Palace win, 4.45 a draw, and 1.6 for a Spurs victory. Uh, these are the best odds I could find on each of those outcomes. I think, I mean, just the way I looked at it, I thought Spurs would be a lot shorter when I went to look at the lines. George, what do you think? Um, yeah, it's a tricky one. I mean, when Spurs have been playing away from home this season, they've always failed to beat you know the set handicap, especially to lower sides. You know, they've they've been horrendous. Um, but I think kind of factoring as well, you know, Palace haven't beaten any uh, top half London side at home all season. You know, they've they've just not been very good. It's as simple as that. But um, yeah, you know, I can see with that. I think Spurs obviously naturally would be favourites, but. Um, but even so, when Spurs have gone away to lower half London size, they've won one and drawn one. So, but then Palace have lost their not, last nine games against Spurs. So it, that kind of obviously factors into it as well. I think the interesting one for me here is definitely on, on cards and potentially goals as well. Um, obviously, just naturally for me, I think I'd quite like Spurs to score, but Spurs to pick up at least two cards because you know they've picked up two two or more cards in a four out of four games away to London sides this season every single game so I think that would potentially be a play for me they're, they're, you know they're the worst disciplined side in the Premier League now Tottenham oh wow um, yeah so I, I do fancy them to pick up a couple of cards in this one because you know Palace are the second most fouled team in the league as well um, and obviously with Spurs gunning for a win I can see that kind of coming into play because I can imagine Palace will hit Spurs on the counter. They'll let Spurs have a lot of the ball simply because even so for them going head to head with Spurs, it's just asking for kind of trouble really to get hit on the counter. And Harry Kane appears to be coming back into some form. Obviously he was excellent in his last game against Leicester. Um, so yeah, for me, I think the play would be either looking at the stats. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably say Spurs Spurs score and Spurs over over one card, so to get twenty plus booking points for them as well. Seeing what the price is with that, um, but no, I expect to see some goals in this one as well. Mm. Haru, there's, I mean, the way I look at it is, you're definitely going to get the best Spurs outfit placed on the team sheet. Um, and at one point six, with that in mind, do you think there's any value there? It's hard to say because the past couple of weeks, especially with the way. I've seen the Spurs play and the way the market has reacted to that in the past couple of weeks and months. It's just they haven't really had any strong support um, for a team that's supposed to be in, in the in the top tier category. Just every every week I've been watching them get um they've been getting bet against honestly, and it's hard for me based on the line history that I'm seeing now. It looks similar as to as to what it's looked like in previous weeks. You just don't really have consistency on their direction. Like they open 1.95, they go like maybe one or two cents, and then they drop right back down. It's just it's very volatile, and I'm just not really seeing any support. So in terms of like getting on the early value, I'm not sure if we'll see it because even if they even if they play their their best their best uh, roster out there, it's just the upside and the value of the line. I don't know if I'll see it there. It's really interesting because I mean, just from my naked eye, when I first saw this, you look at it from the perspective of Palace have got nothing to play for, and they're on a six-game losing streak, and it's not like they've been losing closely. I mean, all of their loss, most of their losses have been quite, you know, quite big. Um, and then you've got Spurs who, off the top of my head, are coming off a couple of wins. Um, and they've got all to play for when it comes to this. So it's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I guess I guess uh, you know, that does play a factor. But when it comes to me, like using my analysis on a, a, a way a market's going to move, the line history tells me a lot. And especially if I can compare it to another set of line histories from similar teams or the same exact teams that have moved in similar ways in the previous games it's kind of easy to gauge that unless you know a big 
big piece of information is factored in later on, then it obviously affects the outcome. But generally, when we see certain uh, line history patterns, it, it replicates itself over the following games as well. Yeah, no, great insight, mate. Um, all right, we'll move on to the relegation battle now. So you've got three games where you so you've got um, Norwich, they've, they've been relegated for a couple of weeks now, or at least confirmed to be relegated. And then the battle between Aston Villa, Watford and Bournemouth, two of those teams are going down this season. You've got Villa on 34 points, Watford 34 points, Bournemouth 31 points. So it looks like they're a lot more likely to go down than the other two teams. But if you look at their goals differential, uh, Aston Villa on minus 26 and Watford and Bournemouth both on minus 27. So you could have a case if Aston Villa and Watford both lose, Bournemouth beat Everton, um, that they will be the team that goes up on goal difference. So... um, it's a very, very interesting scenario that could play out on the final day. Uh, we'll kick it off with Arsenal versus Watford. Prices here are 2.01 for Arsenal to win. Watford, uh, sorry, a draw at 4.01 and Watford to win at 3.94. They are the best odds I could find. George, what do you reckon in this game, mate? Yeah, well, I mean, obviously just part of it in terms of the relegate, I think that's sometimes the most exciting part of it as opposed to what's going on at the top end. The relegation battle is often much more fun. Um, But for here, I can't believe the price of Arsenal. Those odds are ridiculous considering the stats. Um, I fancy them to beat Watford um, to put a couple past them. I expect the distance to be quite a bit. Um, You know, I mean, uh, Watford have lost three and drawn one away uh, to all London sides. this season in fact it's an aggregate of eight goals to two so they don't fare well when they've got to travel to other teams in the capital um you know an arsenal have won five out of six uh, versus tot uh, versus watford at home and they kept a clean sheet in all of those so given the kind of state of watford at the moment you know sacking nigel pearson with what two games to go which is just an outrageous move like mm. I, I won't get my head around that one um yeah, I can't see anything but an Arsenal win here. So that price really does surprise me. Um, mm. And I think I'm up having a bit of a go on that. As well as that, you know, Arsenal have scored in nine out of nine uh, home games against sides in the bottom half, whilst Watford have conceded nine out of nine away to the top half. So it just kind of everything just screams Arsenal goals, really. Um, and I don't see Watford getting anything out of the game. So I think for me, particularly with that price, the value would be Arsenal outright. So maybe see what the handicap is. If it's a minus one, potentially get on that as well. Because yeah, I just see them outscoring Watford by a fair few goals. I think they'll put. I think Watford will ship a few against Arsenal. If I had to guess, maybe the odds compilers are looking at the fact that Arsenal just had a terrible performance against Villa, but mm. maybe they. I don't know. Maybe they haven't factored in that the team that Arsenal played was no. It was like their. It was like a mix between their A and B team. I would say. Mm. Yeah. Um, so the likes of Bellerin will come back in. They'll bring in their full uh, back three with Tierney back in there. Um, They might play uh, Saka on the left wing maybe. The front three was all over the place against Villa. You basically had two, uh, sorry, three strikers playing in a front three. Um, So there was no creativity there. Shaka coming back in to start will be massive too. Um, So you can factor these things in. But Arsenal just, I mean... This is just a game where you would think they would be thinking, let's just uh, put in a good performance so we're ready to go for the FA Cup in the ne- on the next weekend. But Watford do have all to play for. Uh, markets, Haru? Yeah, um, in line with jo- what, what George said, um, there is, out of all the games we've recapped so far, there's um, good support on the total here. Um, they're hitting the overs a little bit, and I could debate the way it's moving is kind of unidirectional, so we're not seeing much resistance. The market hasn't been open for very long, um, and we're already seeing a one directional push towards the over. So I'm liking what I'm seeing here. I think um, the sharps or the market in general likes um, some goals being scored in this one. So if I were to bet on anything earlier here, probably be to get a position on the uh, on the over in this game. Haru, when you talk about getting on or following the sharp money, how can you distinguish between what's sharp money 
and what's i mean most of the time if you are betting with you know pinnacle or on the sharp markets you probably got half an idea about what you're doing but is there a way to distinguish between sharp and i don't know what the best way to put it dumb money is <laughs> yeah well you kind of when you see uh, when you pull up a line history um, one thing that I really value a lot when I'm analyzing it is is the resistance. Um, usually when we see, you know, one side getting hit and then coming back down, that generally doesn't really show us any type of money coming in on one direction. There's usually conflicting opinions there, so that can be a lot of square money being offset by sharp money. But when you see the direction of the market go in one direction, especially early, it's usually people who are, you know, sharp trying to position bets early to capture some some value or, or take advantage of some inefficiencies. So pulling up the line history lets us see that if we see something that's being offset against each other and in terms of like the money coming in and the odds coming up and down, usually there is real no inefficiency there. But if we see it go one way, that generally is a good sign that, hey, there's an inefficiency here and the market's trying to correct it. Mm. No, that's great insight, mate. Um, anything else you wanted to say about this one, George, or are you just heavily on the uh, on the Arsenal bandwagon, which is great to see, by the way. <laughs> no, I'm still heavily on the Arsenal bandwagon. Just uh, the other stat I was looking at as well was, um, you know, Arsenal haven't lost a um, final Premier League game, uh, you know, of the season at home since 92-93 season there so essentially as, as long as I've been alive I've never known Arsenal to lose at home on the final day so it's a sure a thing mate it's an absolute sure <laughs> thing <laughs> yeah there's like also a little bit there's also a little bit of support there on Arsenal on the on the money side as well so it's mm. not just the total um, yeah. and it's, it's just unless we we see Arsenal come out and just like dump the game and come out with you know not not really playing in this one then i mean we i guess we could see some watford support but I mean, as of right now like yeah i i'm not too sure there so the, the that stuff that gets exposed to me closer to the start of the match as opposed to early but things i'm things that i'm seeing early are the, the overs getting hit and also a little bit of money on arsenal side all right should nice. be an interesting battle. I'll be watching uh, very keenly, fellas. See if the uh, Arsenal are looking good heading into that big FA Cup game next weekend with all to play. Um, what we'll do, fellas, we'll take a quick break now, but we will be back in a moment with West Ham Villa, Everton Bournemouth previews, and then also our best uh, bets of the weekend. We'll be back soon. Welcome back, everyone. We'll move on to West Ham versus Aston Villa now. Villa looking to avoid relegation. Also, anything, uh, nothing too interesting here in terms of the odds. It's all very uh, straightforward. 3.2 for West Ham, 3.82 for the draw, and 2.38 for Villa. They're the best odds available as of Friday morning. George, mate, what do you reckon? Well, purely just looking at the odds, I quite like um, just for a value bet on West Ham. I mean, funny enough, I've got, I've got a, one of my best friends is a Villa fan, and it's been hilarious all season just talking <laughs> to him about that. But I think I don't think anyone's going to have a great escape in terms of picking up a result. I think it's going to come down to goal difference, and I think it's who can lose by the least, and I think that's who who will stay up. Um, so that's why I think I've got Villa for favourites to to beat the drop. Um, but I don't see them winning. I don't see them winning. Uh, away at West Ham particularly as you know West Ham have scored in all of their home games against uh, fellow sides in the bottom half whilst Villa have conceded um, in all their away games against sides in the bottom half as well um, you know and Villa just need to, to better Watford's result really um, I think I'm right saying that so but the fact they've just they've only won two away games all season and the last one was back in January against Burnley um, you know they've not won away to West Ham since 2011 as well as that, the Hammers are unbeaten in their their last four home games against Villa. You know that that's with two wins and, and two draws. Um, plus, Villa have failed to score in five out of seven Premier League meetings uh, with West Ham. So you know three of those finished nil nil. So I don't see there being many goals in this one. But I think if I was to say who would score, I think it'll be West Ham. I think Michael Ant Michael Antonio um, <laughs> is in form. I think I saw somewhere it's, it's great the fact that the best rated striker in the league from who scored 
um, it was from a West Ham fan, he said, is our original right back. Because obviously he's to play Antonio right back and he's been out and out, probably the best rated striker in the, in the Premier League recently. Yeah, um, I think he's scored the most goals or he's tied with the most goals with Sterling yeah. since the restart. Yeah, I think those, uh, I can't remember who it was against now, when he scored those four goals in one game. Um, I think that might help slightly, padded the stats a bit, but uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, no, I don't see I don't see Villa losing here. I just think they need to don't lose by too many. Um, so they just got to hope that Arsenal can do them a favour um, and put a few past Watford for them. But um, but yeah, I think the value here, just from those odds, I'm, I'm very surprised to see Villa as you know such big favourites in, in terms of the difference of the price. Um, be it the value probably with West Ham given the statistics but uh, the other market I quite like when it opens will be to see uh, the free kick markets the Villa most fouled side in the league regularly pick up 17 free kicks a game which is a quite a high number um, so it'll be interesting to see what the line is for that um, but yeah in terms, in terms of cards obviously teams pick up a lot of fouls against Villa um, it's, it's quite difficult because you know West Ham. You know they've only picked up two or more cards in three out of eight home games against teams in in the bottom half. So it's quite it's quite difficult. There's a again a, a lot of variance to be had in that as well. So I think from a cards perspective, I'd be I'd be tempted to to leave this one. Um, but no, in terms of value, West Ham double chance. It'd be interesting to see kind of what that price is if I had to kind of look at that because I think it'll be a low scoring game again. But I think if there is a goal, it'll be going in West Ham's way. So with that price. A double chance could also offer good value. Yeah, and I mean that's a, similar to you. I just I looked at that price for Aston Villa and I thought I just wouldn't I wouldn't touch it. That was the only real big conclusion mm. I came out of. But it's hard to touch West Ham also because yeah. they don't have too much to play for. But um, Haru three point two for West Ham, best odds I could find. Uh, is there any money for West Ham at the moment? Yeah, there is a little bit actually. The um, even the double chances has seen some support. Um, it opened at I don't know, I'll just say American. It opened at minus one forty, and now it's up to minus one fifty. So I mean, not massive amount of money there, but I feel like there has been a little bit of um, an inefficiency captured um, by you know some West Ham backers. There is just not anything for Villa, like in terms of like the initial um, bets that have been matched in the marketplace. I'm not seeing anything on Villa at all, and I guess that supports a lot of George's reasonings. Um, if anything's been a play here, it's probably West Ham early on. Uh, double chance. It looks like that's the best thing that's gotten hit so far. Yeah, I mean that's exactly what uh, Georgie said, mate. Jeez, maybe it's George's best moving the market here. Uh, possible <laughs> that's what it looks like this week <laughs> things have changed since I first met you mate you've uh, upped your staking a bit eh what can I say what can I say making moves <laughs> COVID's treated someone well eh well, well it, it certainly did last weekend with uh, in, in Switzerland I felt re- it was weird I've never felt kind of bad for profiting off of circumstance since Donald Trump won the election <laughs> one of the exchanges on that but also COVID absolutely ravaging Zurich and uh, I think I put one out for young boys to score four plus and five plus goals uh, I think you know that was four to one uh, for the five plus and seven to four for the four plus and they won five nil and yeah. it was uh, obviously it was a great great bet so I kind of profited off uh, poor circumstances really but at least some good came out of it yeah, I was not cheering on that fifth goal for <laughs> uh, was it what, what team was it young boys young boys against FC Zurich away yeah, I think I had 70, 70 euros or something on over four, uh, under four and a half goals. So Ooh. that fifth goal was a real uh, kick in the uh, kick in and where you don't want to be kicked, basically. Top scorer and Sami ruined you. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. I still found I've still bet the closing line, but uh, no, well, that's uh, good. It's betting, eh? Um, Certainly is. Uh, Everton Bournemouth. Bournemouth also looking to avoid relegation. They look, as I said before, the most likely to be relegated as they are three points behind both Watford and Aston Villa. 2.29 for Everton here, 4.1 the draw and 3.2 for a Bournemouth victory. George, 
stats wise cards wise anything here mate um it's difficult for me i mean i like bournemouth to pick up a couple of cards just because they always do they're, they're quite been quite consistent since uh, the return in terms of picking up bookings um biggest miss for them i think is the fact obviously nathan ake obviously rumored to be going to to city man city um he's been a big miss for them at the back he's he's a bit of a presence for them and in terms of the way he plays football and he's also a threat in the opponent's box from their set pieces and obviously they're going to be missing him massively um, it was weird because when Bournemouth went obviously to well beat Leicester by such a substantial margin you kind of thought alright they're going to kick on now but it might have looked like a slight flash in the pan performance you could say um, again this is one I think I believe in I think my main interest is in the other two but if, if I was to go on anything, it would probably be Bournemouth cards because uh, I think Everton are going to want to finish on a high regardless of the fact they've got nothing else to play for. Um, they're not going to want to lose on their last game of the season. So uh, and Bournemouth away, I just, I wouldn't, I'd never fancy Bournemouth away if I'm honest. So uh, yeah, I, I'd just go on Bournemouth cards if I had to make a bet. I'd be looking at what the line is, but potentially yeah, it's 20 plus booking points um, for them and maybe a sort of an under in a certain amount of goals if I was to do kind of a, a double potentially 20 plus booking points and say under two under 1.5 Bournemouth goals something like that yeah you feel like the Bournemouth price is maybe just based on the fact that they actually have something to play for yeah um, and I mean Everton have been quite indifferent in terms of form lately yeah, Haru anything in the markets you're seeing mate no um, honestly nothing sharp here no 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 inefficiencies being captured it's just bunch of back and forth um just small action it's nothing significant i don't see anything here i wouldn't play anything early um yeah. unless you're really good and you have a on a read on something but like these things when teams are about to get relegated i mean same principles apply to some of the sports that i'm more familiar with such as nba and like teams fighting for playoff spots and things like that and it already kind of gets factored into the line because the Sports books, you know, their first reaction is to try to get to the right number balance and have balanced action throughout. And so they're just going to price it based on that. So I just, we're not seeing any action here and I wouldn't play anything. All right. All right. Let's sum things up, fellas. Um, George, from all the stuff you've said today, is there anything that you say is probably your best bet of the weekend or something that you've really liked? Yeah, definitely for me. Um, I've had a look at something and it's going to make you very happy. Um, <laughs> I, just purely for a price as well and I, I think it'll happen um, which obviously helps if you're going to put a bet on <laughs> um, I'd go with I think Arsenal on a minus 1.5 handicap is a very nice price it's um, the best spot price I found here is 5 to 2 which works out decimal at 3.5 and so you've got my odds converter here and uh, American I think that's plus 250 so I, th I think that would be my, my best bet purely because it's a great price and looking at the stats it heavily favours that so yeah Arsenal minus 1.5 handicap would be my bet for the weekend How are you mate have you had any plays yet? If I'm going to be playing anything after I get off this call it's probably going to be the over on the Watford Arsenal based on like the line patterns and I'm more confident that that will keep going in that direction as opposed to anything else that we've reviewed today um, yeah. just to have experience reading lines and I feel like the type of movement that's coming there is just one directional. So I really like uh, the over on that game. I'll probably play that. All right. So to sum it up, we want a 4 0 Arsenal victory. Happy days. We'll all go home. <laughs> all three of us will go home very, very happy. Um, and then, in terms of from our side of things from Trade Mate Sports, Marius's CBS picks of the week will be out for CBS in a matter of hours or days. Um, his pick is actually minus 2.75 on City to beat Norwich, and that's at 1.85. Uh, I think that would have been yesterday on Pinnacle. So that's Marius's prediction for the week. Um, myself, I'll stay away from the EPL. I'll st stick with my uh, uh, with the NRL and the Rugby League. Uh, I'll go Rabbitohs to beat the Raiders at 275. I think that's a very healthy price. Rabideau's very vulnerable in the forward pack normally, but the Raiders, normally their strong point, but they have been ravaged through injury. John Bateman might be back though. That could be something to look out for and the reason why the price might be a bit higher on the Rabideaus, but um, I reckon there's a bit of value there. Um, but that sums us up, fellas. Um, 
Anything you'd like to plug today, as always, you can find C. George Gamble on Twitter, card spreadsheets. Look out for his spreadsheets for the upcoming weekend on just about every European league or major uh, European league. And you can find his pieces that he writes for We Love Betting, his match previews there. Um, anything else you want to plug, George? No, I, f- I think you've just done me a favour and done it for me, pal. So I think that was ever- <laughs> everything I wanted to plug. But yeah, go and check them out. Um, spend a lot of time on them but uh, yeah the previews as well goes a bit more in depth into why obviously I've made those kind of picks as well so uh, but yeah you can find me there good stuff and uh, at bet like Haru on Twitter for our pro sports better Haru Masayan anything else mate no let's just get through that quiz I want to see if I can <laughs> crack it this time <laughs> alright you can go first mate top four for the previous two seasons in order Okay, I'm going to start from the bottom up because this has been stuck on my head since we started the podcast. <laughs> uh, I'm, I know I could plug Tottenham in, fourth, in the fourth uh, fourth seat for last year. So, for last year? Who'd you say, sorry? The Spurs. Yep, correct. Um, Man City, I also not finished first, but second and third, I'm just going to have to take a wild guess. Mm, second Chelsea maybe Liverpool I'll just go Chelsea Liverpool yeah right eh? you got the you got the uh, the top four teams right but not in order you want to give us the right order George so the right order Man City obviously won the title um, in an enthralling title race with Liverpool who finished second just a point behind don't ever forget that and then you had Chelsea then it was Tottenham. Yeah, and then George, do you want to have a guess at the seventeen eighteen season? So this is the hard obviously one. Obviously, City won it again. So you know the first of their their double back to back, and then I believe it was Manchester United who finished second mm. at the time. The demise. Yeah, the demise indeed. And then third was a tricky one for me because I know because I think Liverpool finished fourth that season. Um. But I'm pretty sure it was oh, was it it was Chelsea or Spurs, but Well no, because then Spurs played Liverpool in the following season it was the Champions League final, wasn't it? So it'd have to be yeah, it'd have to be Spurs. So it'd be City, United, Spurs, Liverpool. You agree with that, Haru? No, I mean I'm, his opinion's better than mine, so I'll just agree it's a better route to go. So <laughs> I better be right, right, right now. I'm right too. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right, George. You're on fire, mate. You're on fire as always. The quiz master himself. Um even 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 when I take out the multiple choice options, you still uh, you still get it wrong. <laughs> uh, if, if Alex ever does a quiz, it's C. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, fellas, well done again. Terrific stuff from you both. Uh, so jump on Twitter and follow both of them. But other than that, thanks for listening, everyone. Make sure you do a quick rate and review of the podcast and subscribe to us wherever you listen to your podcasts. And as always, start a free trial of Trade Mate Sports. Implement some of the strategies we talked about today, especially the value betting ones, um, and start your value betting journey. Fellas, thanks as always. Thank you for having me. Thank you.